Okay, hi, JJ. So this is an office hours. We're trying something new. We want to just have a more informal opportunity for our Dartisans communities to ask us questions. And with the alpha of Dart M3 landing, uh, this was it this week? Last week? This week? Uh, it was this week. This week. Yeah. Uh, the new Libraries V2 is now available for everyone to play with. This is a significant milestone for the Dart project. And uh, it's an opportunity for us to go and update all of our code to the new awesome futures, streams, collections, and various other changes to the APIs. Um, and so here's the office hours, an opportunity for you guys to just reach out and ask us questions about uh, what's going on. And then uh, what we really would love to do is help you guys upgrade your packages and libraries to Dart M3. So this is a fantastic time to just ask us how to update your code. Um, you can do this by screen sharing your screen or just asking us questions. And uh, this is really just an opportunity for you guys to ask us what's up. So if anyone has any questions, please go ahead and fire away, and we're here to help you out. Uh, Seth. Adam. Okay, so I have one question about migration. Should we be moving towards the streams pattern more than just using the auto update feature? And a, a follow-up to that is uh, just a warning to everyone who's upgrading with stuff that depends on JS interop. If you change the library name for JS interop, your JS.map calls will actually get transformed to JS.mapped by, which is incorrect. Bug oh. file. But just keep that in mind if you if you do a lot of JS interop uh, dependency. That's an awesome bit of feedback. That's if you use the cleanup ability of Dart Editor, right? Yeah, it gets a little too aggressive. I mean, everything else so far has worked pretty clean except for that one uh, one thing I noticed. And it probably happens with anything that's called map where you rename a library, but I noticed it for the JS interop. Any chance that uh, there's a bug for this? Yeah, I found one. OK, cool. Thanks. Good, thanks. Um, good. Uh, so go, going back to your original question, should we, as the Dart community, move more towards streams? I think the answer is resounding yes. Uh, it's already happening in the core libraries themselves. Um, for instance, um, let's see, HTML, Dart HTML is now adopting the stream paradigm or the stream libraries. Uh, Dart IO is, uh, I think there's a branch for Dart IO refactoring towards streams. Um, and uh, so yeah, yeah. Please, please start using uh, streams for your asynchronous version of iteration. If you if you think about um, traditional iterators, uh, where that is like for loops, right? So you that's a that's a pull model. You, you're gonna synchronously pull from the iterator. Streams are kind of the asynchronous push model of of these sequence of events will happen when I'm ready, and you will be notified of those. Um, so sometimes you want a traditional iterator. Sometimes you want to have a more um, uh, push push based iteration, and that's what streams are. So, C certainly try to use streams. Good question. Uh, who here's actually tried to update for um, the latest library changes? Who's like gone through the you know the process with their code? You have. <laughs> No, that that's a great question. Yeah, and who who has uh, who who who's tried to upgrade M three? So I've I've upgraded to M three uh, many of my projects, and actually Adam helped out uh, with Spectre doing some of the uh, the upgrades. For the most part, it was a very straightforward uh, upgrade experience. Um, I'm trying to think. The biggest change I had was I had used some of the future.chain mm -hmm. method. And the way you can translate a future chain to the new API is to just replace chain with then. That's it. So long as the then clause returns a future, it will act like a chain. Perfect. Yeah. And if you ever <clears throat> used um, uh, dot value, yes. that also is now just dot then. Dot then is it. That's that's the way uh, you everything sort of converges to dot then, and uh, that simplifies things. It does simplify, uh, <laughs> but I think John brings up a subtle point: what you return from inside dot then yes. can, um, yeah. sort of dictates what's going to happen next. If yeah, you... there's a real implicit piece of information there, which is if you return like say an int or some yeah, instance yeah, yeah. of another class, then it operates just like then used to. Mm -hmm. But now, if you return a future, then it's a chain. You can chain it off of that. Yeah. Okay, cool. 
I also know that uh, you've got to import Dart async, Dart yes. colon async now yeah. if you want to use future. That's a in fact. When I run, okay, so hot tip: if you guys uh, are upgrading, use the editor's cleanup feature. I, there's there's going to be a little quirks like Adam's pointing out with JS interop, but generally it's going to save you a lot of time. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't also import. Dart colon async for you, oh, so it will no. run. It will run all the like. It'll switch chain to Swap then. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you have to go in and type in import oh. Dart async. So heads up on that. Luckily, it's just one line. Yeah. But um, another little quirk, and I expect the editor's feet uh, automatic upgrade feature will fix it. Is uh, it's no longer futures dot wait. It's yeah. Future dot wait. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's a very easy fix. Um, but that was actually littered throughout my code, and so I just had to go in. And... Yeah, yeah. No, that's a really good also, point. Features is gone. Also, or timer gone. is now... no longer in. Timer is an async. That's right. Yeah. And that's another thing that <clears throat> you may have imports to other things. Dart io. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, another uh, bug that maybe should be filed is um, when you uh, import uh, Dart.json and you go through the upgrade process. Maybe the Cleanup tool should also rename the JSON library for you. So it's like import Dart JSON as capital JSON because most oh, people right. are that's just a, that's a good one, actually. That's a nice cleanup to add. The, now the JSON library has uh, stringify and uh, parse, parse mm -hmm. as top level functions, mm -hmm. whereas before they were static methods in, a, in the JSON class. Now, do you like do you like that change? Uh, I What I did was what Adam suggested, where I went in and replaced every uh, import. Dart JSON to import Dart JSON as JSON all capital letters, and then you don't have to change your code. Cool. I think this is similar to the old map. Is too general to be in the global namespace. I don't know. I, I like I like the idea that we can take advantage of top level functions, and yeah. it, you yeah. can always have just import with a with a prefix, and that works okay. But yeah, I, for a classic chain, just two static methods, like eh, use the top level functions. I don't know. I, I know. I, I go back and forth because it, it is cleaner in a way, <laughs> but. I, I don't know. That was that was a weird change, and I have some some of my other classes have stringify and parse in them, and so I just feel like it's a name that's going to be used all over the place. Uh, okay. okay. So by by changing the import to be as JSON, uh, one I maintain compatibility with existing code, yeah, but then yeah. two, it's like I, I've now optionally encapsulated it into mm -hmm. its own quasi namespace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have the choice. But it's a good tip, you're right. You, most of the time, we're going to want to do as JSON uppercase, just yeah. to make it easier to migrate. Exactly. For migration, it becomes trivial then. Nothing has changed with JSON if you change your import line. Cool. That's exactly what I was going to say. Going, going forward, probably go to the model where we don't uh, rename the library, but for all the code that already exists, and there's a pretty heavy amount where every library has some import of JSON, just makes that migration pattern much easier. Mm -hmm. So there's an important um, thing that I found out uh, when I was porting Dart HTML5 samples, and that's that <clears throat> not everything that you need to update will be caught by the type system, um, and so uh, it's really, really important to run the code. So, you know, I don't really have unit tests for Dart HTML5 samples because that stuff's kind of hard to unit test, and so there's stuff that breaks that has no type warnings at all, um, and so it's really important to actually run the code. Yeah, JJ, I've been bitten by something uh, similar to that in the past, and that's why I manually migrated all of my code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I actually went down that road, and it, the auto-update feature missed a couple things. And then it became this weird game of what did it catch and what didn't it. So. Yeah, I, I, wa I wasn't even using the auto-update. I was just you know looking for errors and fixing them, and when they were fixed, I was assuming everything was working. And it's just not the case, you know, because there's some subtle ways that a bunch of things come together so that, um, yeah, you just, you have to run the code. <coughs> things have changed enough. Um, yeah, I filed a couple bugs for things that might have been able to be caught, but, um, yeah, you got to run the code. Hmm. Good advice. JJ, was there something specific that um, you were more taken by surprise when you did this migration? Some, like some specific advice you could give to everyone? Yeah, so um, I don't know about like specific advice besides running your code, but like th there were a couple ones that bit me. Um, it used to be that when you would call a function that would you know, uh, you know, go off into WebKit land uh, and you wanted the JavaScript default, you could just pass null and it would automatically treat that as the JavaScript default. 
Um, but that no longer works, and so you have to explicitly pass the JavaScript default if that's what you want. Um, there's some really weird corner cases with some of the way that the uh, Dart API doesn't quite match up with the JavaScript. Did we lose JJ? I think we lost JJ. Um, but yeah. good advice on his way out. I think, I think it's also, um, I get the impression that that's, that's going to be the direction that we're moving in in general, right? We're moving away from add event handler, remove event handler mm -hmm. to streams. And Definitely. that's a big divergence from JavaScript. Yeah. So yeah. I think you should try and write code towards Dart and not rely on uh, some compatibility with JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. I think that was part of Adam's question, right? Is uh, should we just go ahead and embrace the stream API as the way to fire off this sequence of events? I know the answer is absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, streams There's are no, the future. Right? No question. The future so, is here today. <laughs> so another thing that really bit me is that I was calling this function that used to return a list, um, and so I was receiving it into a local variable, and my local variable even said list. If I wasn't using var, I was using list. Uh -huh. um, but then that changed iterable. But in Dart, um, you could downcast without an explicit cast. And so, you know, Dart looks at that and it's like, oh, you're downcasting. You must know that it's actually a list, not just an iterable. Well, the fact of the matter is it wasn't a list. It was an iterable. And so then when I tried to index into that list, it crashed. Yeah. And so that means that, you know, because of the way our type system works, you know, it's very, very friendly. But in that case, you know, you could only catch that problem at runtime. It won't be caught with a... Um, with the static warning. Sure. Yeah, so you, you need to remember to call to list, to set, to whatever. Yeah. Or, or be aware that something's now return iterable yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, both, both of those things. Yeah. yeah. But like if you if you have a large code base, you might not know where to look to find those problems. And that's why I'm reiterating again, the only way to find those problems as far as I could tell is to is to run the code. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I got hit by that too in mapped by. So oh, yeah. MapBy, yeah. I think, returns iterable, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Yeah. The second thing is MapBy also returns read-only, I think a read-only view to the list or something like that. So I actually had to pop it out into another, just call two lists, and then I actually got an editable um, list. And I'll just make one more plug before I kind of step out of here to let someone else join and ask questions. Um, I, I realized that I've refactored two separate types of code bases. The ones that used a lot of the optional static, uh, the optional types, seem to refactor much better than the code bases that didn't use any. So uh, I think that was a big win for the optional type system and the Dart editor. Nice. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Actually, this is a good question for the the people who have joined. Um, do you use the static type annotations? to annotate your local method or function level variables? Anyone just join in, it's OK. So I could tell you the rule that I've been following uh, for Dart HTML5 samples. Um, I use, uh, I explicitly state the type if it's not dead obvious looking at the code. Um, now, if I'm calling a function, and that function's not in my file, it's coming from elsewhere, um, then I won't know the type unless I look at the code, and so I, I will specify type. Um, but if I'm setting you know, a variable into some you know, static value um, where I could just reason about the code um, directly, um, then I just use var. So I mean, for me it's really like, if I could look at this code and without any other code, and I could mentally figure out the types, then I use var. Otherwise, I use uh, a real type. And that's kind of a, a subtle variation on what we normally do, which is just always use var locally. Um, but well, to be specific, I like the, it. To be specific, the type, um, sorry, the style guide says prefer using var. I don't, this style guide is not use only var inside that's right. methods. That's right. That's right. And I, I think we had a long, long discussion about the word prefer. And so, yeah, prefer. But it's totally OK to use the type annotations if that's what you want. That, and that's why I love to take that poll, because I'm, I'm kind of curious. So coming from C++, I cannot break the habit of using uh, type annotations. That's the OK. The only time yeah. that I've ever, like, that I kill out the type is when I'm explicitly calling a constructor, because then it's just very redundant. Mm -hmm. so, so you are when my the line of text, because the type name is so large that it's like going over the 80. Uh, <laughs> 80 <laughs> character limit. I'm like, well, you know what? Let's just shrink that down to both. So, Abstract so class, factory, be, class, yeah, factory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah.
R random equals new random. Yes. But you would not do random random equals new random. Yes. Okay. Good. Because the the type is already on that line of code. Yeah. But but your OCD doesn't kick in when you don't put random at the start. It's hard to break the habit, but yeah. I'm starting to get that. Okay. That's good. Good. Yeah. good. 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 Okay. I, I mean, like to hear that. Wars are there for a reason, right? Yes. 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 So hello to, to, hello to the new people that have joined. Yeah, this is this is an office hours for you guys. So uh, a ask away. What do you want to? Know? It doesn't have to be specifically about M three, although that's what we're all trained up to do to help you guys today. But uh, what what's on your mind? All right, and uh, I'm going to start calling on people's names if you guys don't. Uh, That's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> Are people talking and we're not hearing? Yeah, just if someone's talking, we can't hear you. Just FYI. Can you hear me, sir? Hi, guys. Uh, you there you go. Me? Yes. Hi, Ali. Uh, hey, uh, sir. You mentioned in, uh, in your mail that uh, the format on dot click dot add would be replaced with on mouse click dot list. Right? So, is that going to be replaced or going to be supported? Because I don't see a warning in the in the chat editor. I don't see a warning on the old format. I, there is no warning. Yeah. That, that's a good question. So you, you, you barely came through, so I'll reiterate for you. Uh, the question was, uh, the recommendation is to move to the new stream-based uh, APIs in Dart colon HTML, which would be like element.onclick.listen, which replaces the old way to do it, element.on.click.add. Mm -hmm. uh, but as Ali points out, and what we've noticed too, is that there's no warning on the old way to do it. On.click.add does not give any sorts of warnings. Um, I suspect that's because the engineers are being really nice and giving us this grace period. Um, maybe what we should do is file a bug and ask them to add uh, at deprecated to some of those APIs. Um, but the general advice is move to dot on click dot listen ASAP because the old way will be removed as far as I understand. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So Seth, I was thinking I might just wait until the warnings come out because that'll make my life so much easier. What do you think about that? Well, if you got cycles now, the probably the advice is to move to the new APIs as soon as you can. Uh, a, they're going to get ripped out anyway, the old ones. But B, if you notice something when you go to the new APIs and you provide some feedback for us, that's really really valuable. So I would say as soon as you can. Uh, do it and let us know how it goes. So then, like JJ, when you moved to some of the new APIs, you had some really good feedback and uh, insights into the process. Okay, so what, what we can do now is Shailen's actually provi um, um, prepared a couple samples using the new APIs, and so we definitely, you know, please do ask some questions here in the office hours. But uh, Shailen, do you think we can show just a couple of some of these new samples? Oh, sure, sure. Um, okay. Well, so I want to, you know, I, not knowing fully who's going to be showing up and who wasn't, I sort of prepared something that starts with very basic stuff and moves up. I don't know how much of the basic stuff I should skip. Should I just go over just, it fast? I think you should go ahead and show some of the basic stuff. And, okay. I, and Ali, if you don't mind, can you uh, mute? But of course, if you have a question, go ahead and unmute. So why don't we start with the basics, and if we start to hear a lot of people say, you know what, this is too simple, then we'll okay. skip ahead. I like it. So speak up if this is way too basic. And yeah. if you can't see the fonts, please let us know. We try to embiggen them a bunch, but we can embiggen them more. So to yeah. do this if you can't see anything. Is it embiggen <laughs> or bigify? Oh, embiggenify. Embiggenify yeah. is, is, a, is a good one. So All it's right. a technical term. So um, <laughs> it's, uh, our camera is up there. My screen is down there. So if I'm burrowing down like this, it's not because I don't want to look at you guys. But this is how it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So example one, really simple. <clears throat> we got completer. We, so we, I create this little function called get num. Create, creates a completer, completes it, and returns completer.future. Just going to give you the number four, and then. So wait, what are, what are we seeing here? What is this? What are, right. what are you demonstrating here? So I'm demonstrating like futures 101. Got it. Futures so 101. You know, okay. What you, is a future? A future. What is a? You know, it's hard to answer the question without using the word future. Okay. Right. It's, okay. huh? it's a promise. Huh? It's a promise. It's a promise to use the word future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a future is. Well. 
I'm trying to do this without using future. Or, Don't worry, use a future. Okay. That something will be given to you in the future. It's not there now. And when it's given to you, then you will do something. I like it. Okay. Yeah. Right? That's so the when then plays nicely with the with the API dot then, right? Why are, why are futures important? Well, sometimes things are expensive. And you don't want your application to block. We don't think like that in Dart. Okay. We think asynchronously. And specifically, we don't think that way because Dart is a single event loop execution environment. Uh, think of it just a, a queue, right? And, and you're going to just pop off all these little work items. They may be callbacks. They may be instructions. Anytime one of those guys does something really expensive, you're blocking everything else. And so if you can return this token, this future token, yeah. you return it right now, uh, the event loop can keep going. And when that value is ready to be given, it can get just put on the event loop and eventually, oh, yep, I'm ready now. Yeah. So it's like, I'm going to keep doing other things. And when you have something to give me, then I'll listen to you. I like it. All right? Mm -hmm. So unless anybody has objections, this, is, this, this little page is over. I'll uh, no. Oh, oh, we OK. <laughs> You have an objection? What is a yes. what is a completer? Objection. <laughs> a com what is a completer? Well, why do you John, have that? Why do you have that bit of code there? Well, so this is how you return a future, and uh, so maybe maybe one way to think about it is, if you look at there is a receiver, there's a thrower and a catcher. Okay. Right? Yeah. So the completer is the thrower. The completer is this object that eventually will throw the value to the catcher mm -hmm. in the future. And it's not aware of who's then, catching. Yes. It's, yeah. It has no notion of that. It throws somebody. So the pattern that. you see with the code there is you instantiate a new completer class. And then from within that function, you return completer.future. You don't return the value mm -hmm. that you've completed upon. So that future then gets grabbed by the calling code they assign their then method to it. And then whenever the completer calls the complete method, that future becomes the value itself. And it's then method calls. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Now, this is a bit contrived example because this doesn't show the long running or expensive asynchronous operation. Uh, imagine inside getNum would be like a database query. Yes. All right, all right, yeah. here. So since you brought that up, let's, let's do go it. to the second example. Yes. OK, here we go. This drives it home. Okay. So, so Perfect. I, I didn't actually tell Seth to segue so beautifully, but it, you know. No, we're, uh, we're linked. Um, I like it. I actually don't think I need .io, but I'm not going to try to break anything. All right, here we go. So it's the same get num. Now it takes two seconds. Before the before it completes. Before it completes. Now, so the so so. It takes two seconds before it ha returns a value, but we should say that this function though is going to return instantly. Perfect. The, the get num is going to return instantly. Perfect. Right? Yeah. yeah. So there's two things. So there, get num has three parts. You create a completer object. That's the first part. Completer dot complete is the second part. Okay, it's wrapped in a timer here, but mm -hmm. that's what it is. And then com returning completer dot future. Because most people think is uh, think very synchronously about code, it's tempting to think okay. The first thing happens, and the second thing happens, and the third thing happens. The whole point of async here is the first thing happens. Yeah, you get a completer object right away. The last thing happens. You return it. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing happens when it happens. Correct. Yeah, at some point later. At some yeah. point. It, mm -hmm. could be, it could happen really right away if you're just returning the number four. But if you're waiting two seconds and then returning the number four, but it happens two seconds later. And this is what I like about completer. Uh, you can take that instance completer and Thanks to lexical scoping, access it from deep within, you know, a yes. bunch of callbacks, yeah. or you can pass yeah. it to some other guy. So whoever's got a handle on that completer can complete it, yeah. and then ma magically, uh, the, the whoever's listening on that future yeah. will get that value somewhere else. Exactly. I, yeah. I like that. So okay. so let me run this. So notice that the returning showed up. I don't know if you can see it. No. It's kind of small because you can't <laughs> you can't ambiguify. Ambiguify. Mm, that's a bug. So it's for those of you right, here, here. who aren't in the room with us, the first line says returning dot, dot, dot. And you can see that print statement clearly in the source code. OK, and I've highlighted it down here. So you have to trust us that so that's really what it says. And then the 4 shows up a couple of seconds later. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So here in our main, when Actually, we call Actually, if we could be more explicit, what happens after 2 seconds is that the then statement executes. Yeah. Correct. Then it has nothing to do until it gets something. Yes. 
Sorry, I interrupted. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So again, get num dot then is. What you're doing is you're queuing in the future when the completer has completed, call this function. Mm -hmm. In which case is a closure, which just prints the value. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So this is the pattern that you're going to see over and over and over again in code that uses completers and futures. You instantiate a completer inside that function, you return completer.future, and then the calling function is typically going to be chained immediately with a dot then. Yes. Right. And futures are really great for one-time uh, events. Yep. I want to get a value, and there's only going to be one value that's going to come out of this thing. I want to do an HTTP request, and when it, when it is finished, then I want to, like, you know, print the JSON or parse the JSON and get something out of it. Right, right, right. Now, I'll contrast that a little bit with, say, streams. Mm -hmm. Right now, the stream API is designed to allow you to set, uh, spit out a sequence or series of these events. Future is really a one-time deal. Like, yeah. I'm waiting for one kind of uh, event to happen, and when I'm done, that's it. So my go-to examples for future versus stream is a future is an HTTP request. It's like this one, this single thing that you kick mm -hmm. off, and it's going to take a while, and it'll complete. Whereas a stream is an on-click. The user could be clicking over and over and over again, and it's you're not requesting the click to occur. You're just being told that it happened. Mm -hmm. And many, many clicks can happen. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Perfect. Oh, by, the, by the way, <coughs> oh, go ahead, JJ. Or reading. My favorite is reading lines from a file. You could have a stream where it's giving you a bunch of lines coming from a file, and then you could modify that stream to create another stream, which is all the you know lines coming from a file uh, UTF-8 decoded, and then you could modify, create another stream coming from the original stream, in which case you, um, you know, break it on tabs. And so I think of it as Unix pipes in a certain sense. Mm, that's right. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, analog there mm -hmm. between yeah. streams yeah. and Unix pipes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, this sounds like a good segue to get into streams. Do you have some stream stuff for us? Um, yeah, I can get... Or are we jumping ahead? Well, you know, it depends on what we want to do. There's no jumping ahead. Um, do you guys have any questions about uh, the basic kind of concepts about completers and futures? And if you're shy... Oh, we've got a chat. Okay, perfect. Sorry, guys. You should definitely use chat as well. If, um, that, that's fine. We'll start actually monitoring this now. <laughs> um, I'm a Java programmer, so it's in my blood to use static type, but trying var out. Okay, cool. Thanks, Frank. I, I'm a C++ programmer, Frank, and I'm in the same in the same vein. It's it's very much just in my blood to, to put the types everywhere. I like it. It's very verbose. To, to me, either you use types or you don't. So I don't know. I, I think there's definitely a middle no, ground. I'm going to disagree. Well, clearly, well, clearly yeah. in Dart, there is a middle ground. In yeah, Dart, yeah, no, Dart, in Dart. Dart. But, so it's a Are there other adjustment. languages? I'm no, no, sure. no. What I mean is Dart, Actually, in my, in, in the, in the way my head is wired, I, I'm saying either I put wars everywhere or I put random, random equals new random. So and so, it takes a little adjusting to say, okay, you know, I don't need to do this verbose thing every. Oh, I mean, traditionally, that's how yeah. your brain was wired. Interestingly yeah. enough, uh, yeah. C is actually moving towards the Dart way. In C plus uh, eleven, eleven, yeah, they introduced the auto keyword, which just like Dart's var keyword, it just automatically deduces the type based on the right hand side. So we should probably be really specific about that. So in Dart, var is not like auto, right? <laughs> in Dart, var is a stand-in for dynamic. Yes. Now, yes. the editor, and the I think editor, there's a flag yeah. in the editor. You can be like, yeah, be a little bit smarter. Mm -hmm. But that it's going a whale above and beyond uh, what the language spec is saying. It's true. You know, var yes. is dynamic. Yes. There is no auto. But I, I, I write code with with the checkbox for the editor that says, do some extra inferencing yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I think it's super helpful. I guess, so in this in that sense, they're not the same, but the programmers are, are moving towards that way where it's like, I don't need to write out the type. If, yeah. if the compiler or the tool can deduce the type for me, why, why write it out? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, we're watching the chat now, so go ahead and use that or just, just wave your hands and... Uh, and speak up. That's why we're here for you. But uh, I, you, you've got some more in futures, then I think. Yeah, actually, I I played around with error handling in futures yesterday. Oh, good topic. I got deep into it because I okay. kept getting bitten. I wasn't sure what was going wrong. Okay. So if you're trying to use dot then in the editor, let's let's just try it here. Okay. Tell me if you guys can see this. Okay. Notice it tells you that, mm. oh, it takes an on error. OK, so these are two different callbacks. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the, it's a common pattern, right? When things go well, do something. When things go badly, do something else. OK. Right? Beware of on error. 
And if we have time, I'm going to try to convince you to never use it and use better things that Dart gives you. OK. OK, so I'll go through that quickly. Uh, so here's, close this. That doesn't matter. All right, here we go. OK, so here's a simple error handling. So you got a function named foo, which should be returning a number, but it doesn't. It throws. OK. And you have another function called get num, which is the standard one for all our examples. And this one returns a future. OK. All right? But this time, it calls foo internally. And then it uses complete error. So here, you're writing get num with the expectation that something bad may happen. So yeah. you're smart. You write the try, the catch. OK, and yeah. that's where a completer comes in again. Right. So here we go. So if things go well, we put it, we put the value of whatever foo gives us into val, and we return that. Completer.complete, the same stuff we had seen before, we're good to go. If things don't go well, we need to do this. OK. This is how you handle, <clears throat> this is how you basically throw or raise in, an, in, the, in the async context. Mm -hmm. If you just write <clears throat> throw, I don't think, I. I it kind yeah. of sort of just falls apart. Well, hopefully you have an example of that, because that's where I think the on error might come in. But you're right. This is ex ex You expect something may happen. Yeah. Let's do the right thing, complete error. Okay. Yeah. So, so whatever is returning a future should handle errors that it gets from somewhere else or raises internally and emit those errors using a complete error. OK? Then this is what you're handling all of that looks like. So here we go. We call get num. We put a then, and this part, let's see if I can highlight this, is the success. Okay. Right? We get the value for whatever, and we print it. But we're not going to get it the way this is written, because foo, as we said, throws, right? So then you should just call dot catch error. Not on error. And I'll explain in a minute why. Yeah, so that let's actually point that out because you're you're not this catch error handler is not part of the then call. Right, you're you're actually chaining something to the end. So That's then, right. yeah, and then chain on a catch error to the future itself. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying do this, and then if there's failure, use catch error to catch that. In this case, let's just run it. It says not going to give you an int. It catches that error. Okay. So there's an important thing. Um, some of my code was um, calling basically get num and getting a future, and then I would do it in two statements. I would do a dot then a future dot then, and then I would do a future dot catch error. And that is not the right thing. You need to do it in a single chain. You yeah. You excellent excellent point, JJ. You should, yeah. Why don't you reiterate that because that's a tricky one. So if you um, you call git num and it returns a future, and some of my code was saying uh, future dot then and then later future dot catch error, but because the way futures work, um, that it ends up uh, setting up two different chains of uh, like future handlers, and um, it just that is not the right thing. So if you're gonna call use catch error, you want to chain it. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, JJ, we did, uh, thank you for bringing this up. We we did what you should not do. I think this is what you're saying, right? Don't do yeah. this. Don't do that. Right. Because essentially you have two things now. Here, not, this is going to just, oh, well, we can run it. OK. Oops. This was not supposed to work. Oh, wait. Uh, let's see here. Get num. Uh, this is it. So oh, no, it needs you, to be. Yeah. If you do this, and then you say, this is, I think, what you're saying, JJ. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Because this will return. Try that. Now is that still doing it? Maybe it's two different thens. Uh, no, it's uh, we're not reproing the correct uh, case, but this is definitely the broken way of doing things. And was a there was an email to the mailing list about this, but this actually bit me in my own code. So you yeah, just yeah. in any case, remember to do the chaining. It and sounds like next... what we, it sounds like what we should do is let's let's um let's take an action item. We'll write up a blog post. We'll repro the exact situation, yep. and we'll we'll show the don't do this and we'll show the do this version. So thank you very much for bringing this up. Yeah, yeah. This is this is. Uh, I'm going to write up all of this stuff and then uh, you know I can add that um, that stuff there. Can I make this slightly smaller? I actually can navigate. Uh, okay. no, I'm really. Uh, this is you going on YouTube thing? later. It the bigger that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so hang on. Happens. One one more thing, Shailen. Um, yeah. 
So it used to be that you, as far as I can tell, you had to call, um, what is it, a handle error? I, I can't see your code. It's a little bit up. Uh, uh, you, with the code than, where I define the function here? Uh, a little bit higher. That's just foo throwing. Yeah, yeah. So it used to be that you had to call complete error or whatever, handle error or whatever, not handle error, but... Complete error. Um, yeah. Complete error before, um, and that you couldn't just raise an exception. But uh, Florian was saying that actually if you raise an exception, it'll be caught by the system and automatically translated into complete error. And uh, he told me that, and I tried it, it didn't work, but I think I was using a slightly older version of the SDK. Uh, so this might actually be like brand new functionality where I think it might be the case that if you happen to raise an error, it will get caught and translated into complete error. And that makes life a little bit easier. I, I wonder actually though what he, if he was talking about something slightly different, which is in your then, if you raise an error, yeah, that's where on error will kill you and catch error will beautifully help you out. Okay. I, but but I, but I'll try your thing also. Um, so it sounds like we let let's write up a blog post on no. the different ways these features can throw errors yeah. and the right and wrong ways to change it. This is this is great. Okay, we definitely need more here. Okay, so on error. Now let's just go back to the way the editor, at least for now, is telling you to do this. Right. The same get num. You call. Oh, this. Okay, you you call foo, and um, it throws. Get num again calls foo checks to see if there's an error and sends out a complete error. Now, if you throw rethrow in your then, this will fall apart. Oh, okay, so, so here we have then we know that uh, foo is going to throw an exception. Right. So this will catch foo's exception nicely. On error will catch it, but because your then already also did some mischief. Oh, so you're not re-throwing. You're just throwing a new exception here. Yeah. Sorry, that um, confused uh, Throw something new. Got it. OK, that makes more sense. Oops. Sorry, guys. I'm not used to this font. OK. Throw something new. OK. That something new now will not be caught by on error. But it will be caught by. Why don't you, why don't you run the code now? What OK, happens? so. Sorry, this is not. It's making me look like a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to change foo to return for and then throw from inside there, right? Because the then clause will never execute the weights. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's why I had it as that. Okay, I changed it without thinking. Here we go. Thank you, John. There you go. Um, we called it foo return for. There were so there was no problem here. Yeah, no problem there. Completed or complete happened normally. In here, you got into the then normally, and you printed the value, which I can attest actually happens. The number four was returned. That's a value. That's what you get. And then we threw something new, and at that point, all hell broke loose. There was no way to handle that. Got it. You do this with um, catch error. OK? So again, you return a four from yeah. foo. You handle that. All the code is the same. And OK, I won't call it rethrowing. I'll just say yep, something. throw something. Let's find our end. Right? Mm -hmm. And now you run it. Got it. And it says, ah, you threw something new. I can handle that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so that's the real, for me, a real blessing of using catch error. Um, yeah. It's it's one of those things, you know. It's just uh, I don't I don't know if there's a bug to. Okay, I don't know what scenarios there are where you would want to use on error and not catch error. Cool, but we will find out, and we're going to document yeah. that for everyone. I like it. One last point. This has been made by people on the mailing list. This is a huge point. So again, we go back. To, so this is about when you do error handling. If you wait too long, it's gonna it's gonna bite you. Okay. So again, foo throws. Get num is exactly the same. It 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 it, it does what we, it was doing in previous examples. Now, <clears throat> we create we call get num, and we put all of this stuff, the then, or the on error, 
inside a timer. Okay. So anyone want to guess what happens here? I know, so I won't guess. But but getNum is going to throw an exception. Right. At okay. this point... And num is a future? Yeah. Okay. So I, I should have called it something better. It's not a number. It's a future num or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? So at this point, out of the errors emitted, and there's no one to handle it. Because your on error is getting attached after three seconds. Got it. And in this case, on error is not to blame. The same exact thing thing happens if you use catch error. If you put it in a timer, okay. Well, or go back to the other example. What what happens? Okay, so um, oh, you want me to run it? Okay, yeah, cool. yeah, of course. There, uncaught. It says uncaught error, unhandled exception, blah blah blah, and it gives you it gives you all the details, right? If you do this with catch error, catch error is good for other things. So this works because I call get num inside the new timer. Mm -hmm. But if I had done this, that should not work now. Yeah. So I think the key point is you're raising is that there's a race condition here, and you need to make, if you're going to call something that returns a feature, you need to call dot then as soon as you get that feature back. You can't do it later because if yeah. you do it later, you're going to hit this race condition, and you know things won't be set up correctly. And that's so, because it, if you miss a, a, a loop in the event loop, right? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. exactly it. That's right. That's right. Um, I can move to streams now. There's one. I'll just mention it. This is very simple. Um, not not wait. I'm sorry. When complete, I actually don't know if this is brand new, but I don't remember seeing it before. Maybe it was called something else. I don't know. Let's go down the code. Okay. So again, so here I've modified foo slightly to randomly either return the number four or throw a string. Okay. Okay. So again, get num has not changed. It's the same. It just it, it does some it, it, it try catch and then it returns. Okay. In main. Oh yeah, this is new. Yeah, go this ahead. is new, yeah, right? Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. So this is uh, you know the equivalent, but you know when you write in synchronous code, when you write finally, uh, where you have um, you know you try something, you catch an error, but whether you catch or you uh, or there's no abnormal termination, you want something to happen, so you put that in finally. Well, this is the async version of finally. Mm -hmm. So here we say, all right, we'll call get num. If everything goes well, we'll print the value. That's here. If there's an error, we'll print the error. But regardless, yep. we will do this. Awesome. Run okay? it. So run it. And you'll note there that in the source code, these are all chained. They're mm -hmm. all chained from each other. They are chained. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. So in this case, in my example, I know this is a little small to read. You have the number four being returned, uh, because that's what Foo gave you. And it says, when complete, run regardless of success or failure. OK? Do it again. I was going to file a bug that you're missing a comment. <laughs> you're missing a comment. But, but, but you fixed OK, the bug. well, that's that the nice. same. Oh, there you go. So now it's through. Not going to give you an int. But this ran again. So you know this is a very contrived example, but a more no. When complete is awesome. When complete is yeah. great. But like for instance, imagine I think there is code in dart dot io, uh, where you sometimes have to create a temporary file or a temporary directory and then pass that to a function. That function could return something or it could throw. Yeah. Right. But in in, in any case, you want to get rid of that temporary file or temporary directory when you're done. Right, so that's what when complete is about. Anyway, this is finally in an asynchronous context. I love it. We're, we might get kicked out of this room, though. So, do, do you have a streams. quick way to show us some streams? Okay, so I'm gonna. I had I had three demos. Um, I had a map by thing, but that's uh, Adam and every, a bunch of other people. Let's, let's about try that. at least. Uh, what's the concept of stream? Show me a simple example. Streams. Okay. Um, all right. Let me get. You could probably drop down your font. I think people in the next room from me can actually see it. Uh, the, tr the trouble, though, is when this goes back up on YouTube, we lose a lot. So we're going to have to keep it big. OK. But you can, you can put a return there. Yeah.
Okay, so when you, why don't I just, this is a very simple example of a single subscription. And hey, uh, sorry guys, can yes, I just uh, drop in? Um, oh. Hello. Hello, hello, just, just, just have a, a quick interruption. Yeah. No problem. Please ask away. Uh, no, no, it's, it's just that I was just up on the YouTube stream. I'm sorry? Oh. Say that again? Yeah, the sound is a bit slow, but if you go into the YouTube, to, to YouTube stream, you can only see you three guys talk, and that's very exciting, but uh, most people will like to see the code. Yeah, no, no kidding. Um, weird. I don't know how to change that. Thank you for the heads up. You know, I can. I have this on GitHub. Should I just put out the link? Yeah, we'll put it in the. We'll YouTube. put it in the show notes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seth, if you're doing the Hangout on Air from your laptop, why don't you click on um, the window that has the code? I ha I have. In fact, that's how I've been running it. Okay. Yeah. yeah Sorry, that's I thought this was so what we did. Yeah, is everyone having this problem or we're talking about just the YouTube? Yes. Just the YouTube. Okay. Can you oh in the YouTube stream literally not see anything else? Oh cameraman. Oh, Google Effects. Sorry. Okay, well we're gonna have to work on that. What if I share my screen of the hangout? We can go deeper. We can, yeah. Well, you know what? Okay, sorry. Well, apologies for that. Um, we're going to have to do some tests afterwards to figure out how to fix that for next time. We're going to get kicked out of here really soon, so um, maybe we could just be really verbose with our description of what's happening here for the last couple minutes. Not oh, You mean verbose because they don't have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's two kinds of streams. Single subscription and... Sorry, well, uh, let's back up again. What, what is a stream? Um... Actually, I could see the code now on YouTube. OK, cool. Good. Can, can, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Who said they couldn't? Can uh, you? That's Frank. Frank. Frank, can you see it? Well, if, okay. if JJ can see it, yeah. We'll, well, I'll make sure this is. Uh, uh, sorry, I, can't, I haven't just looked at it. OK, no worries. Um, streams, what are streams? What are streams? This is like the equivalent of what are futures. Um, well, so I think we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Like mm -hmm. a future is a single event. A stream is a sequence of events. Yes. Uh, that are asynchronous. That will arrive at some point in the future. In the same way that you have, like a you know the future has a then clause. The stream you subscribe to it. You, you have a listen. And you have an yeah. on data, which yes, is really like data. on thing you care about. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So many examples of streams. Uh, you used button clicks, right? You can have a series of button clicks. Yeah. Um, bytes. Uh, JJ used I/O, a great example, right? Bytes in a file, like give give me when I've read a certain number of bytes of file, over and over and over until the stream the stream is closed. Bytes over a socket, mm -hmm. right? Uh, web web socket events uh, is a perfect another good yeah, use that, for streams. That would be another stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure there's plenty others, but uh, that's 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 a stream. And uh, okay, cool. So here's a very simple, um, like one, you know, streams one on one example of a single subscription. So the, you know, the language is a little. Um, can, so there's emitters and listeners. You know, we ev emit events. Um, then there's also streams and subscribers. So I, it, it, the language is a little bit mixed up in our API. Okay. But it's the same stuff we're talking about. Something is streaming and something is listening or subscribing. Yeah. Okay. So here's a stream. We create a stream from an iterable, a, a small list, one, two, three. And we, we stream out the square of one, two, and three. So, every, so the first thing that comes out of there is one, because one squared is one, then four, and then nine. This is a contrived example. And there is, um, this is a single subscription, which means there's only one subscriber to the stream. Or the stream uh, expects only one subscriber. This, yeah. So. Nothing happens unless there is a listener. I'm sorry, I'm using confusing. That. Unless there is a subscriber, right? Right. Um, then, so we we put all that in a map stream object, map stream dot listen. Now we have a listen listener subscriber, and it waits. So I is going to be one. It'll print that. Then the next thing from the stream is four. It'll print that. Next thing from the stream is nine. It'll print that. 
and it's done. Yep. This, this, the stream is exhausted. If you do this, we have a second listener. It, it will complain mightily. Well, but before you do that, okay. comment that out and run it so everyone can see. Okay, so. The true is for when I was asking if, if was it a single subscription. Are you a, is, is it a single subscription? Yep, it is. And then print out each event, each um, thing that you got from the stream. One, four, and nine. That's what you get. If you try to do this again, it won't work. Bad state. Stream already has a subscriber. Yeah. Can't you can't trick it? Okay. But you don't need to trick it. There is a there is a a, a nice way to do this. So you can have the streamable by as many subscribers uh, as you want. So let's look at this example. It's a simple example again, but the listening is more complicated this time. Okay, so again, we just call. Oh my God, how did I do this? Right here. No, because you've defined stream. Oh, up, I've defined it up there. That's why. Okay, I'm sorry. This is what happens. We have like. 48 size font. All right, so we have a stream object that I've defined way up here. Okay? So all my functions can have it. And now I say, give me a new stream from this iterable, one, two, three, just like we did last time. And here's the important line as multi subscriber stream. And then you just say, okay, I'm going to just return the square of those three numbers with each, each, uh, uh, each time. So I have defined foo, bar, and bot. Hold on about foo right now. Bar and bot, bat. Um, simply listen for everything coming from the stream and then print out a simple message saying, uh, you know, in this function, yeah. this is. This so is what's each happening. one of those functions sets up its own list, so subscriber slash listener. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so there are two listeners for now one inside bar and one side inside bat. And we are, in fact, calling those two. Right here. Okay, so if we run this, it'll say, and I'm sorry if this is small, in bar i equals one, in bat i equals one, in bar i equals four, yeah. four. So we nine, see both, nine. both subscribers dealing with a series of events just fine. Right. Got so it. so this is actually a simple simple case where this happens. If you look at the API, there's ways to do it so that it goes so right now it goes one one four four nine nine. If you want, you can go one four nine one four nine, right? But in the interest of time, I'll, 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 you can explore that. Okay. Exercise for the reader, isn't that what you say when you don't want to go into something? It's yeah. an exercise for the reader. But there is something else that's kind of cool about about all this stuff, which is I have defined a function foo, which actually kind of just sort of mixes things up a little bit. Okay, so let's look at foo. Like bar and bot, foo, foo said, "I'm going to listen." To the stream, and it does the usual printing in foo i equals i, but then it has a little bit. And John helped me with this yesterday. If i is one, it says call bar also. If i is four, call bat. In other words, set up another stream listener yes. either at the beginning or the end. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So 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 arbitrarily, so, we have picked these points to to. But what's really happening here is you're setting up a new stream subscriber uh, in the middle of stream's ability to send events. Yeah. Yes. OK. Yeah. Awesome. So let's run this. So we'll go through this line by line, OK? Fu is saying, we know the stream is going to be sending 1, 4, and 9, right? So Fu says, so that you predictably will see in Fu, i equals 1. Great. If i is 1, you call bar. But you don't see that now. You'll see that the next time Because you already missed the emitting you, of the event. Right. Yep. One no, came and sense. went, and yep. bar missed the vote on that one. Sure. So next time, when four comes out, it says, i equals four in foo. Sorry, in reverse. In foo, i equals four. In bar, i equals four. So bar has joined in, gotten into the action a little mm -hmm. late, but it, he's there now. Sure. And so in our code, we say, if i is, the same, is, is equal to four, mm -hmm. Get that into the action too. Mm -hmm. So now the third time when nine comes around, well, foo consumes it first, bar consumes it next, and then bat consumes it. That's the only thing that bat consumes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
there's a lot you can do beyond this. This is a, just a simple I think get you started. What example. this illustrates to me, though, is streams are really, it's a stream. And so if you introduce a listener in the middle of a stream, of course he's not going to get any of the previous events. Exactly. Yeah. But he comes in right then for every other every other subsequent event. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, we could extend the list even longer. We could add like 16 and, you know, keep going. And then all three of them would start getting everything past four. Bingo. Yeah. So, um, before we, I'm, I'm sort of rushing because I'm fearing a knock on this door that throws us out. Yeah. So I, you know, um, built a small little app. Um, so when you create a new, let me just get rid of all of these. Um, when you create a new web application using the dot editor, it gives you that familiar click me. Well, why don't I just do it? Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I am sorry. I'm sorry, folks. Okay. It's my computer. It's complaining mightily about something. Thanks to screen sharing, too. Oh, yeah. But guys, make sure if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat window here, or, of course, just pipe up, wave your hand. Uh, was that a hand wave for a question? Maybe not. Uh, so anyway, make sure, you know, we are here to answer your questions, so let us know. All right, I screwed up, never mind. Let's, um, for the sake of time, let's just look at the async demo here, okay. when you got prepared. Okay. okay, so you would get, okay, I'll explain. Don't worry about the old way. Okay. Tell us the new way. So let's just run it, and you'll see it's familiar. Well, sort of. It's that click me, right? Mm-hmm. And you click it, and it goes backwards. Okay. So now I do a few other things to it. Let's get rid of this. So I use, so the syntax you would have. Why don't you minimize this? Yeah. So the syntax you would have is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it up one level. So what we're showing here, we're showing the use of streams and the new Dart HTML library uh, together. So we're showing you some simple bit of browser code that is using the new streamified versions of Dart HTML. Yeah. Cool. So the original uh, code, if you know, if you were to create a new app, would would create this element. Show us, show us what's going on here. Okay, 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 okay. And it would say dot on dot click dot add. Now we already talked. That's yesterday's news. What we do this now is l dot on click dot listen. So on click is going to give you a stream. Uh, and when you listen to it, you get a, John, is it stream the, the subscriber? Stream subscriber. A stream, stream subscriber, ob some stream subscription object, yes. Oh, that's returned, yeah, sorry, yeah. So on click returns a stream, and the listen returns a listener, which, if you want to go look at the API, is a stream subscription object. Mm -hmm. And in that, I call the original reverse text function, and then I, it's a contrived demo, of showing how you can pause the stream and resume the stream. So that looks a lot like Ruby or Python code. No. Yes. Why? It's not camel case. Oh. OK. <laughs> I'll follow the bug. <laughs> I can't put commas in the right places. I can't camel case. What am I good for? OK. GitHub has an issue tracker, and so we'll make sure. We'll make yeah, sure. Don't worry. Yeah, don't okay. I'll send you a pull request. <laughs> OK, OK. Well, so what is pause? You should and probably actually, no joke, it'd be really cool to show off the renaming capability. OK. Can you do that really quick? Um, Right -click and rename. Right -click. Actually, Frank has a question. He's wondering what the return objects for all of those different things are. So maybe you could talk about the return object of onclick and the return object of onclick.listen. Okay. Great question. Okay. So why don't I, instead of spending time on pedantic stuff, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I see the irony in me telling you not to spend stuff on time on the stuff. Slow, man. If you let this go, what's next? OK. So, <laughs> so the stream object, so var stream. Is on click a getter? Yeah. Yes, OK, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a field. Yeah. All right. It returns a stream. So maybe you could just right click on on click and right click on listen in order to see the types? Uh, maybe just hover, I think, maybe. Yeah, yeah. is that what you mean? With the cursor. Yeah. Let's fire this up. Right click. Going here. I mean, yeah. it's a stream. <laughs> well, it's a stream, guys. I promise you. Stream. Okay. 
<laughs> no need to yell. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm yelling. I'm yelling. Take one exclamation point off of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A thought about it. Okay, <laughs> guys. And Subscr, which should have been named something slightly more pronounceable, is a stream so subscription. Stream subscription. I actually have. You that got there. that right there. I have that. There we Perfect. go. Okay. I have a I have a quick question. Is there anything that this new approach to um, you know HTML handlers can do that the old approach couldn't do? Yeah, I'll, I'll demo demonstrate that. I mean, the old approach. Look, you, in plain JavaScript, if you want to add or remove um, event handlers, it's a complete pain, but you can do it, right? So there's all sorts of stuff that you can do now, but much easier. What happened? Nothing. Ignore me. <laughs> All right. Let me. Can I just sort of talk through this code, and I think I'll come back. I think hopefully that'll answer your question. Okay. So, so here we go. We get this element which we found up here, right? We found an element with a particular ID, and we said on click, it's the stream. Listen to that stream, and call reverse text. So click me becomes the reverse. Okay. And then you call pause and resume. A horribly uh, not camel cased, okay? So pause and resume. <laughs> Horrible. <Yeah. laughs> takes a subscription object, right? And it pauses, it, it, it calls a little helper. You know, maybe I should have not made my code so, so dry. Basically, what it's saying is subscript.pause, mm -hmm. okay? Um, here. It causes it, calls pause, and it basically toggles the class. Okay, but let's let's go up a level. So streams can, uh, sorry, subscriptions can be paused or resumed. Correct. Yes, that's right. So when you and so what is that? What does that mean from a subscription? Without like walking me through the code first, talk about the concept. So okay. the reason why you care about the stream subscription handle, yeah, subscr, right, yeah. Uh, is because you want to control when you getting events on that stream subscription, right? And you do that by pausing it. Or, or resuming, resuming it. it. Okay. Okay. Or canceling it. Or canceling it. Okay. Right, John? Yeah. If yeah. you're done with if the subscription, if cancel. you're done, and you don't want to listen anymore. You cancel and you're out of there. So now, the old way would be like on click on dot click dot remove event handler, and now that you have a subscription, you just call cancel. And canceling yeah. is just canceling your subscription Correct. to this sequence of events. You are not canceling the, the stream itself. Yes. The stream can be done, but that's an entirely different. Uh, that, that's a exactly stream, right. Yeah. You need a stream controller for that. That's another topic. Yeah. Yeah. So though this pausing, just so we're utterly clear, this pausing, resuming, and canceling is only about your receiving of the events. Yeah, right. your there could be other subscriptions to the stream. And while, if you call pause, whatever, they're not paused. While yeah. a yeah. subscription is paused, any events that are emitted by the stream are buffered. So you don't lose any events when you're paused. The other people will get the events if they have a subscription where it's not paused. So you're not blocking yeah. the other subscribers. It's cool. A, it's a choice for the subscription. It's like a TiVo pause. Yeah. When you press play again, you, you resume you where you yeah. picked up, not exactly. like where the time actually is. Yeah. yeah. I like it. All right. So all I'm doing in this, in this example, if we run it, I've been monkeying with it, so I hope it still runs. Okay, here, and I am actually going to give you uh, a little bit of console help. I don't know if I can make that big. Anyway, the point is, in the in the default dart example that you get, you click this and it becomes backward. You click that and you get click me again. And you can keep going back and forth. <clears throat> Pleasant. I decided to make it a little annoying, which is you can click, but then for two seconds it pauses, and after two seconds it resumes. So let me demonstrate that, and then we can look at the code. Okay? So I click, and I can click all I like. Nothing's going to happen. Now it's clickable again. Got it. Mm -hmm. Now it's clickable again. So look at look at. I don't know if you can. Can you make no, this big? Let's not worry about that. Uh, well, I just want to yeah. talk about pause count. But that's an internal. Yeah. Okay. I, I like think an implementation detail. Well, what we're seeing here is uh, you are pausing your subscription. So even though there are clicks happening. Your your listen your subscriptions your listeners aren't receiving those things because it's been paused. Yeah, so which is cool. The subscriber cool. here is paused. I log that, and then I put a little timeout. That should be a uh, timer. Yeah, you will could, that work? You, you can oh, make yeah. a timer. Up. You can yeah. put timer. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and then I resume it, and pause and resume are just very thin wrappers for. Yep. Um, Fortunately. And Even if I was incorrect about the way pause works, 
It may not queue it up. It may not queue it, 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 it may up. Not okay. queue it up yeah. yeah. So the the important thing to take away from this is it sort of it keeps a reference count of this, right? So if you pause twice and you want to resume, you need to resume twice too. Oh, uh, that's the point. Okay. Mm. If you don't, if you pause twice and resume once, it, it throws up its hands and says, so "I don't." So let's take a note and figure out. Still like, paused then. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's figure out why why that is. So there may be some some reason there. Yeah. yeah. So pause is not. You're not toggling some state. It sounds like because you have to toggle it in the same mount, pausing and unpausing. Yeah. So there is this. Um, so here I. Can you make this big? Oh yeah. Here we go. Here we go. So I click. And it says pause count is one, right? But then it just reverted back, and now pause count is zero. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what's happening. It's just keeping it's a counter internally that's just keeping track of how many pauses, how many resumes. Yeah. Um, oh, good. We're getting a question for Roman. <laughs> oh, maybe not. But th this is a good time to say, uh, you know, we're going to wrap it up in just a few minutes. If you guys have questions, now is a good time to ask them. Jump in the chat, wave your hands, ask with voice. Any any uh, last questions about some of these new features in the Dart libraries? No? Okay. Cool. Well, hopefully you guys are updating all your code to M3. We've seen a lot of traffic on Pub as people are uploading the new packages, which is awesome. We're also seeing people uh, take their new packages with and put them onto Drone IO, which is a continuous integration service that has full support for native Dart apps. And so, if you want to ensure that your code keeps working, then you should totally use Drone. It's very cool. Ah, yes, beer o'clock. I like it. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, lots of cool things to keep your apps updated and running all the time with our continuous continuous integration partners, uh, Drone IO. Very cool. I'll, I'll write up all this stuff. I'll put it on GitHub, and I'll send out um, emails to the mailing list and to Dartisans. OK. Um, G plus. Cool. Well, let us know if this format works for you guys. It's office hours um, and how we can make it better for you. We want to make sure you have a good conduit into the team. And uh, if this live Q&A thing works for you guys, then that's cool. We'll keep doing it. So I want to I want to thank uh, John and Shailen and JJ and definitely thank all of our watchers and guests. It's really really appreciate it. Um, you can find us on the Dart mailing list, misc at dartling.org. You can find us on uh, Stack Overflow, uh, tag Dart. You can find us on Google Plus, Plus Dart, and our Dart uh, Dartisans community on Google Plus. So lots of good ways to get a hold of us. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's it for today. Mm -hmm. Everyone have a great weekend, and we appreciate it, and we'll see you online. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.